For many, the concept of the Manton effect relates to whether a given power affects living things or inanimate objects. That is not a wrong definition, but it is a limited one. The more general idea of the concept is the tendency for powers to be restricted in one way or another. It can relate to what things a power can influence, but it can also relate to how precise a power is, its range, and many other things that can be summarized as the quirks of a power. While the effects themselves may differ, there are two commonalities that are consistently recognized. One, the effect reduces a power's lethality. And two, the effect helps to prevent harm from coming to the user by their power. Though, bear in mind, these are generalities, so depending upon one's given Manton effect, they can fall into none, one, or both. Regardless, a set of examples are in order. For one, I can reference how telekinetics cannot simply crush someone's heart, generally or how pyrokinetics in the same way cannot simply boil someone from the inside, or how projectors cannot manifest their constructs within someone's body. To reference specific parahumans, there's Vista, who can compress and extend space, but not within people. There's Faultline, who cannot split living things. And there's Parian's telekinesis, which is only really effective on lightweight cloth slash porous materials. However, there are cases like Marquis who still have a restriction, but it's a bit looser. He can manipulate his bones and the bones of others. However, to do the latter, said foreign bones needed to be sufficiently exposed, and even then, what he could do with them was significantly reduced compared to his own bones. Number two is self-explanatory. Lung doesn't get harmed by his own fire and is generally highly resistant to fire anyway. Sun Dancer does not get burned by the heat of her miniature sun. Gru does not get affected by his own darkness. And most perims that can become intangible don't tend to fall to the ground unless they want to. Evidently, a mountain effect does not necessarily equal something that detracts from a power. At times, even restriction can be a benefit. For example, consider Crusader. His projections can interact with organic things, but when faced with inorganic materials, they pass through. So, in practice, he could use his projections to bypass most standard protective armor to stab a person directly. Or, he could use them in a more subversive manner and use them to surprise someone on the other side of a wall or give an object. Now, I want to mention a variety of other Manton effects that could be considered as, quote, irregular or outliers or odd. Panacea cannot use her biokinetics on herself. Skitter's power extends to earthworms and sea creatures like krill. I, I guess that's not really a limit, but whatever. And Shadowbird's power, which, to be fair, is a limitation perhaps in part for safety, does not seem to affect silica in organics. To refer to Vista again, besides being unable to internally warp people, her capabilities are hindered by people in general. As in, more effort and time is needed to use her power if people are inside her selected distortion area. Though, plants seem just fine. Truly, the specifics of a power can be quite fascinating. I want to mention that all this is a fairly basic explanation of the Manton Effect. Remember, even in-universe, it's not fully understood or fully studied, not too dissimilar to many concepts in our own reality. In fact, to reference a theory from a certain individual, they surmise that the Manton effect may relate to one's mental associations, and while not attributed to them, it may also relate to the context of one's trigger event. Before moving on, I'll pose the question, how could one bypass the Manton effect? Well, the simple answer, though perhaps not the simplest way, is to have a second trigger event. Not a particularly easy thing to do, nor a particularly pleasant experience. Alternatively, one could find someone to remove the restrictions, somehow. Or one could find a thinker creative and capable enough to bypass the effect. Now, with anything dealing with power mechanics, shards are always involved. 
In this case, more than anything, the protection of the host takes priority since said host is kind of, you know, needed to gather data. Well, that helps to explain why parahumans aren't as lethal as they could be, and why most parahumans aren't immediately offed by their own powers, there is another reason why powers are generally restricted. At least in my mind, so I suppose take this next part with a little grain of salt. Humans are lesser beings, and even shards, which are only fragments of greater entities, are likely too much for a person to handle. So, it makes sense to think that parahumans are restricted to prevent them from being overloaded. Now, this may not be an example of the latter, I'm reminded of how thinkers, or a decent number of thinkers, get headaches when they overuse their powers. Theoretically, that could be there to prevent them from having their heads metaphorically and literally explode. No, besides that, it is an interesting thought. Who knows what could happen if a human was able to use the full power of their shard. They may lose their mind, or perhaps a limb, or maybe both. Or maybe turn into a monster. I will mention that there are notable cases where a host and shard are more intimately integrated with one another. For Glashtik, Oanya, Biksh, and a number of others, their mental status is a little abnormal, to say the least. Anyway, perhaps not my neatest video, but I think I've conveyed the information accurately, to the best of my knowledge. However, once again, do tell if I got anything wrong or have misconstrued something. Until next time.